Well, hello, this is Paul Adams from the First Southern Baptist Church of Reading, Ohio. I am glad to spend this time with you and uh, welcome. I've been praying about what the Lord would want me to say in this particular Saturday. It's a Saturday evening, July 18th, and uh, we had our first in face service last Sunday morning, and we plan to do that again as well tomorrow. But we continue to record these Saturday evening services messages, and I hope that if you're listening, you will enjoy and you will take in what I pray God gives me to share. And so I'd like to begin that in prayer. I was praying before this video began, and not for any kind of foolish recognition, foolish if ever you're serving God for any reason except you want to please God and, and help and, and show God's love and truth to others, then it, you are foolish. And I'm not trying to be foolish. But I feel in my heart the need to stop and to just momentarily just pray. And maybe uh, wherever you are, uh, let's just pray together. Maybe something's in your life, something in your heart today, maybe something in your own personal life or within your sphere of influence, uh, uh, maybe it's a neighbor or uh, someone in your family. Uh, but let's be in prayer. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for this moment we have together. Jesus said, when two or three are gathered together in his name, he promised that he would be in their midst. And now I, I invite you, Lord Jesus, I have come here this evening, not for any kind of show or any recognition, but to honor and to please you and to share the message, the message of your word. And whoever is listening right now on this video, I pray you would take it and you would use it, Father, to reach someone who perhaps right now needs to hear this word from God. And so I pray that they might know that this is not from me, but this is from God. In Jesus' name, I pray that you would anoint this message, anoint it with your wisdom, your spirit, I pray. And God forbid that I should glory or even attempt to take any credit because I, I'm a foolish person that you have reached and saved by grace. And it is by your spirit I am allowed to speak. And I pray that what I would share would come from God. In Jesus' name, and I give you thanks. Amen. And we give this message over to God. I hope that you have said in your heart that I've given my life over to God. That I've given my family over to God. We see that throughout scripture and we have seen that through so many countless lives. When a father or a mother or someone in a family, when they stand by faith and say, Lord, I'm taking a stand. As you died and you gave your life for me, I surrender my all to you. And God is going to do great things in your life. Maybe you're a young lady or a young man and you're going home and you're bringing God with you into your home. The good news is this, is greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, which means the God who lives within you in whatever situation you're in, though it may seem insurmountable, maybe the odds seem so great that you just can't deal with it. Maybe you feel defeated, but be of good cheer because the Lord Jesus, His Spirit lives within you. And His Spirit now has given you the power to overcome. The scripture says, what has overcome the world? It is our faith, our faith in Jesus. The Word of God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Again, it is written in God's Word, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. And then, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. We serve an all-knowing, all-powerful God. And He is there to comfort us in times of sorrow. He is there to strengthen us in times of weakness. And in times of foolishness, He is there to give us wisdom. And when we face insurmountable odds, Jesus, He is with us to give us the encouragement and the know-how. He gives us what we lack. All He asks us to do is to go out and do our best. And sometimes it may seem like it's very little. 
We're reminded of the story of a young boy who stepped out into a valley. His name was David, and he faced off with a giant. And the king, King Saul, he tried to put on him the armor of a soldier, but David had never been trained as a soldier. He was this young boy who had brought food actually to his brothers who were in the army, Israel's army. And he wanted to get information on how his brothers were to take back to Jesse, his dad. But when he got there, he realized that the camp of Israel, they were in fear. And they were in fear of this giant named Goliath. And he was amazed that the people saw this giant and they continually looked at the size of this man and listened to him defy God. And David was astonished because he was a young man who kept his eyes on God. And no matter what he faced in life, though the odds might seem insurmountable to everyone else, but to young David, he looked at God and everything else in his life, no matter how big the problem might be to others, to him he said, what are you worried about? What are we afraid of? He's just a mere man. We serve the living God. And I'm not afraid. I don't need the armor. All I need is my sling. I'm going to go down in the valley. I'm going to do my best. And I know by faith that God will do the rest. And that's what God asks us to do. He asks us to step out by faith. And you may say, well, I don't think I can do a whole lot for God. You give God your best and He's going to take that seed and He's going to cause it to grow. And God will do mighty things through your act of faith. So here we are. And I'm going to be reading from God's Word, Acts, the 10th chapter. And I'm going to begin reading at verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears Him and works righteousness is accepted by Him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree, his crucifixion. Verse 40 of Acts chapter 10. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, Whoever believes in Him will receive remission or forgiveness of sins. Those are the words that Peter, long ago, uh, was preaching. And I'd like to go back to the second chapter of the book of Acts. Words that are very similar as he was preaching again to a different audience, but nevertheless the message was very similar. And I'd just like to call out one verse. It's found in Acts chapter 2, and it's verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. He is Lord. A lesson from the cross. Jesus is Lord. God raised him from the dead and he openly demonstrated that he has power over the grave. When he died on the cross, he died for your sins and for mine. He suffered the death and the hell that we deserved. And he was given the power by God the Father to be raised from the dead on the third day. And God openly declared that this was His Son, and that He is Lord. 
The title that is greater than any other name. Jesus has been given. He is Lord. I'd like to turn again to a familiar passage of Scripture. It's found in Matthew's Gospel. And I'd like to read words that Jesus spoke. And this was after His resurrection. And forgive me for taking too long to get there. But it's found in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Jesus said after His resurrection, He had been openly uh, declared by God the Father in heaven that this was His Son and He was given a name that is above all other names. He is Lord and Christ. He earned, He was given, and He received that very title as Lord. He is Lord of all things in heaven. Jesus says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Jesus has been given that title and He alone as Lord. Through His death, through His obedience to the cross, by giving His life, and by being raised from the dead, Jesus was declared He is the Lord. He is the Christ. That is the Anointed One. The Appointed One of God Almighty. He is the Savior of all. And there is no other. There is no one else. Jesus has been given that title as Lord. And very important it is. Because we are told that our salvation comes by confessing that He is Lord. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. Romans 10.9 That if you shall confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. It is to acknowledge, to believe, and to confess that He is the Lord of all things and He is the Lord of my personal life. No longer is it I, but now the One who lives within me is Lord. It is written in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives within me. He is the Lord of my life. He deserves to be the Lord of my life. And only He has demonstrated that He has the right to receive my faith. Now that doesn't mean that in every situation, every turn in my life, that I'm going to be uh, expecting what's coming. So many that uh, I've talked about in these previous messages, people dear to me and in my own life, we experience tragedies. We know that in this life that every day, every week it seems we're surprised and sometimes those surprises are not at all what we wanted to happen. There's the death of a loved one. There's someone sick in our family. I'd mentioned before in one of the messages that we received a phone call one night, my brother, my dad's brother had been hit by an intoxicated driver. He was walking on his farm next to the road. He was going uh, next door to visit grandma, his mother, and a man was asleep at the wheel. He was intoxicated, drunk, and many times he had been given warnings and tickets and so forth but that night he went off the road and hit my uncle walking with his car and it killed him. And I shared how my dad cried and how it broke his heart and it broke the family's heart down in Kentucky. And I think of another situation. I remember uh, in a garage one evening and uh, my dad was standing there and my mom opened the door and there was my mom and other sisters. It was such a close family. We still are. But it was such a special, unique family to live in, and I thank God for it. And I remember my mom looked out at Dad in the garage, and her, her sister's name, one of her sister's name was Bernice, and she said, Elmer, that's my dad, Bernice has cancer. And eventually she died with that cancer. 
And so my remember my dad, he put his hand on a car because he loved her and all the sisters. We were close, as I said. And I remember dad, he started to cry. And uh, it was a sad evening. We go through those sad evenings. I talked about going through times of darkness. There are many different types of events. The loss of a job or it, it's countless of the different troubles and the heartaches that we go through in life. But in every situation, we are given the assurance that Jesus, He remains Lord. And no matter what you are going through or facing in life, I find myself many times stopping and saying, Jesus is Lord. Maybe it's a situation at work you're going through and you don't feel like you're be being treated fairly or someone maybe has lied about you and it gets discouraging and sometimes you feel like giving up. Stop where you are and say, Jesus, He is Lord. Maybe it's a sick child. I remember one time I love sharing stories because stories, if they're true and, and they're told in the right way to help someone, they offer so uh, much insight. Jesus was the greatest of all storytellers. But I just want to share this story with you. I had been at, Cry at Children's Hospital in Cincinnati and my daughter had just been diagnosed with Crohn's and it had went to a very severe stage and it just broke my heart. She was there for multiple days and uh, her mother was staying with her and I remember looking at her back and I could see her ribs. She looked so sick and her body was just shaking. She had lost so much body weight and I just broke me. But I got on the elevator and this man got on with me and we're leaving that evening. And he said, he introduced himself and he said to me, uh, I guess you have a child here. How is she? And I, I gave a little bit of message to him about my daughter and I said, how about you? And he said, well, I have a, a child, I think it was his son, and he has leukemia. And we've been here so many times, but I just don't think we're going to leave here this time. And my heart just broke for him and he cried a little bit and he thanked God that he had that relationship with his son and that he expressed such faith in God as we got off the elevator. And it reminds me that in every situation, even the tragedy of the sickness of a child, Jesus is Lord. If we don't stop and remember and put our faith where it belongs, we will ourselves become bitter. Have you ever known maybe that could be you? And I'm not judging you. Sometimes we go through things in life and it changes us. Sometimes for the good, but sometimes not. And sometimes in those situations when we begin to question, why me? And we begin to point our fingers at everyone, including ourselves. Sometimes you have to be willing to forgive yourself with God's help. God forgives you and he wants you to forgive yourself. But sometimes we blame God and put all of our anger and bitterness at Him and say, Lord, I was trusting You. And, and that situation, it didn't go where I thought it was going to go. I thought You were going to turn it around. I thought You were going to heal. I thought You were going to deliver. I thought You were going to do something different. But what happened was not at all expected. Stop where you are and just say, Jesus, You are Lord and I love You. If we will just stop even though how painful that situation may be and say, Jesus, you're the Lord of my life. You are Lord. Your name is above all other names. All authority has been given to you. And I'm going to stop now and just give you all my trust. I can't understand the situation that's in the world, but I'm going to stop and say, Jesus is Lord. And I'm going to commit, I'm going to surrender this situation, I'm going to surrender my, my feelings, my emotions, my anger, and I'm going to place them at His feet and say, Jesus, You are the Lord. You died for me. You died for my sins. You were raised again. I can trust You. I can trust You with all my heart. Here's a wonderful passage of Scripture in Psalms chapter 2. And uh, if you uh, just give me a moment, I'm sorry, I don't have this mark. But in Psalms chapter 2 and verse 12, 
The Bible says, blessed are those who put their trust in Him. Blessed are those. Why am I blessed? If you're saying that sometimes the situation doesn't turn out the way it's supposed to, or the way I want it to, I should say. I have to leave God in control of that situation and the outcome. And say, Jesus, I don't understand. I don't see clearly why that happened. Why, this is, why I'm experiencing, experiencing this situation right now. But I stop and I say, Jesus, You are Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Sometimes I sing that song. Many times throughout the day I'll stop and I just have to remember that He is the Lord. My problems that I have, they seem insurmountable. But when I remember that He is Lord, that doesn't mean that the problems are going to go away. But I remember now that Jesus, He's in charge. And though I'm hurting, and though I may be broken, I'm not going to let that situation, by God's help, I'm not going to let that situation overpower me. It's not going to destroy me. But I'm going to move on. I'm going to step out by faith and say, Jesus, You're the Lord of my life. God has made You Lord. He's given You the name that is excellent and is above all other names. And You are the judge. And I'm going to leave this situation in Your hands because I know as a judge, You have all judgment and You have the right judgment. That's so essential. My essential, the essential walk of faith is to, to believe and to know that as Lord, He has been given all judgment and all judgment is in His hands and He will do what is right. And sometimes that doesn't mean at that moment I agree. Certainly when there's a tragedy and someone is sick with cancer or even a death or perhaps a loss of a job or we look all around us in the world today it seems like when we turn on the news, all we hear are stories of disease and protest and anger and division. But as a people, as Christians, as you today, wherever you are, everything would be so much different if we would just remember that Jesus is Lord and confess in our hearts, Jesus, I confess you are the Lord and I pray you'll be the Lord of my life. Take away this bitterness. Take away this fear. Because if He's not the Lord of my life, and if I don't confess, if I don't believe He is Lord, then I'll live every day full of fear. Because I realize that if life is in my hands, then there's so little I can do. Things so easily are out of my control. When there's a problem, when there's an illness, when I have trouble at work, or whatever the situation may be, it is frightful. To know that maybe it is though I'm out on the ocean alone and I'm just drifting without any direction, waiting to be killed. But that's not how God wants us to see life. He wants us to remember that Jesus comes into our lives and He is Lord. And that He gives us direction. And if He is with us, who can be against us? Jesus was on that boat that day when they were out on the rough sea. And the disciples, they went and they found Jesus. He was asleep. And they woke Him up and say, Aren't you concerned? We're going to perish. We're going to drown. And Jesus said, Oh, you lack, you lack faith. Oh, ye of little faith. And He rebuked the winds. And they were amazed because even the sea obeyed His voice. All authority has been given to Him. He is Lord. The sickness that you may face, He is Lord. The financial trouble that you're having, He is Lord. The problem in a relationship, He is Lord. It brings great peace when I stop and remember and I, and I receive God's message that Jesus came to earth and He lived a life of perfection so that He could take upon Himself my sins because He cares for me so and you. And He died on the cross and He gave all His life's blood so that He could purchase our salvation. 
our salvation and eternal forgiveness, it is in Christ alone. And God raised Him from the dead as Lord. And He is the victor. He gives us the triumph. He gives us the victory in life. You say, yeah, but you just said sometimes we go through sickness. Sometimes there is death. Sometimes there is tragedy. But I have victory because He is the Lord of my life. And He is with me. And He helps me to overcome so that in every situation, I have the peace and the joy and the hope of knowing that because Jesus is Lord, He has all things in His control. And He is judge. I don't have to judge that situation. I don't have to determine who is right or wrong. I'm not going to blame, game on, uh, blame God because I know that Jesus is Lord. He has done what is right on the cross for me and He is going to continue to do what is right. And sometimes we see through a glass darkly. It's, it is though we're looking through life and it's just a haze. We don't clearly see. But the Bible says one day, we have this promise that we, as we are known by God clearly, one day we will know Him and we will know all things clearly. But until that day, we will stand and say, He is Lord. He is Lord. Whatever you're facing, life changes when you confess and hand over your life and your burdens and say, Jesus, you're Lord. Your Lord, I can't handle this anymore. I can't handle these troubles. I can't handle these problems at work or in my personal life. It's too much for me. It's destroying me. I stop and I say, Jesus, you are Lord. Maybe right now, wherever you are, why don't you just stop and believe God's word? Take God at his promise and say, Jesus, I confess your Lord. And I invite you to come into my heart and life. That's what God wants to do. He wants to come into your life. In times of fear, He'll be your help. The Bible says the Lord is my help. What shall I fear? The Lord is my helper, the maker of heaven and earth. What can man do to me? To have that faith, to have that knowledge, to have that assurance that, Lord, you're with me. I don't need to be afraid. And in times of crying and sorrow, Lord, you're my comfort. The Bible says he is the God of all comfort. I know that there is going to be times of sorrow. I've seen it. I've been there. And maybe I've never been as low as you are, whoever you may be. But God has and he understands and he sees your sorrow and he loves you and he wants to be there with you. If you will only turn to him and not blame, but say, God, I trust in you. I'm surrendering my all to you. I confess Jesus is Lord. Let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you now and I confess that Jesus is Lord. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and he was raised again. And he uh, and he alone is Lord. And I pray that you would forgive me, dear God, of my sins. Come into my life that I might enjoy the peace and the hope of walking with you. Forgive me and save me, Jesus, Lord, Lord Almighty. Amen. I hope you prayed that prayer. And if maybe you know the Lord and you're struggling, go to Him in prayer. Stop and right now where you are and say, Jesus, you know before I even ask, you know the situation I'm in. I confess your Lord. Forgive me. I've let bitterness and doubt rob me from my walk with you. I'm turning to you and I'm confessing right now. Situation, Jesus is Lord. Home, Jesus is Lord. Work, Jesus is Lord. Because He is. God loves you. Talk to you next time.